I didn't know how the culture shift was going to happen, but mm. I knew it was necessary. Mm. And so we got a coach, a leadership coach. For the organization. For the organization. Mm. Um, because I felt like I can't be, even without knowing what needed to happen, I didn't feel like I, I should be the culture shift. Like everyone needed to shift. Yeah. And so we got a coach, uh, somebody we've worked with for quite some time and who's been very, 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 very mm. um, helpful. Mm. Um, and um, so we went through like a group coaching, went through individual coaching. And through his the group coaching, some things sort of made sense to me because he said, um, he asked us, what is culture? And then one person said, culture are the things we do over and over again until they become the norm. And so for me, that was like, wow. So if we've been doing something over and over, and it became the norm. We can actually do it and do something different. And then that thing will become a new norm. A new norm. Mm. So it's possible to change culture mm. by doing something mm. that is desirable and mm. is different. Mm. And then the other thing he said that people do what is rewarded. That's true. So when you reward grants mm. and you reward sending emails at midnight, then people do it mm. because they're going to get a reward out of it. Mm. I was like, wow, mm. okay. So we just need to reward different things mm. and we need to stop rewarding things that are mm. harmful. Mm. So through that process, um, the institution, we came up with three things. Mm. One was um, work-life balance. Mm. And during that group coaching, even before the, the whole coaching ended, we agreed that we're not going to reward emails sent at 2 a.m. Mm. <laughs> or emails sent on a Saturday or emails sent on Christmas Day. Mm. We're not going to reward it. Mm. And we are going to like discourage it and say it is not good. We it's, don't want it. It's not healthy. It's not healthy. Mm. Just just changing the email behavior mm. really transformed within days. Mm. Like transformed everyone's life. Mm. That That's not enough, but it mm. was the beginning. Mm. Because uh, this gentleman explained and said, um, if you're the boss and you're sending an email at midnight mm. and your direct report receives the email at six o'clock in the morning mm. and they say, oh my God, I was sleeping and my boss was up at midnight sending emails. It's already then does something. in their mind, they're feeling like they're not doing enough mm. because if the boss is up at midnight, how come, how mm. can they be comfortably mm. asleep at the same time? Mm. So they start also trying to emulate the boss mm. and waiting until midnight before mm. they sleep. Mm. Then as, as they wait, they're sending emails mm. and then somebody else receives them, mm. the emails. Mm. Then it's like, oh my God, my supervisor was mm. up at 2 a.m. and he, I was sleeping. Mm -hmm. So they start staying until 2 a.m. Mm. and they're sending emails to their supervisors. Mm. As they, so in the end, everybody thinks since the boss does it, the boss mm. appreciates it. Mm. And after, sometimes after the feedback was like, wow, thank you so much for staying up so late to, you know, mm. deal with this matter. So you mm. feel a positive energy loop and you feel like, okay, tomorrow I should stay mm. until 2 a.m. Mm. Hmm. And so in the, before you know it, it's a, it's a norm. And yet none of those emails are urgent. Hmm. None of them. Hmm. Rarely hmm. were they urgent. Hmm. Just like that, we said, we're stopping sending emails after work hours. Hmm. I, can, I can receive like three emails from Friday to Monday. Hmm. And most of them won't even be from my hmm. team. Hmm. If I have emails to send to people, I'll, I, I still work late. Yeah. I do. But you'll schedule. I'll schedule them. So they, they hit people's at inbox eight. at 8 a.m. Yeah. Just that small thing yeah. really changed everyone's life. Mm. Mm. <laughs> um, but then beyond that, as I said, we started working backwards. Mm. Where are we getting this workload and burnout, mm. this obsession with um, grant mm. writing? Mm. And we write hundreds of, now I think this year we're writing about 165 mm. proposals that mm. we submitted. Mm. But of course, the people who can write proposals has increased, so mm. it's not it's not like um, mm. A is equal to B. Mm. But still, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. So let's go back and find ways of prioritizing. Mm -hmm. Let's find ways of doing it differently. Let's find ways of doing it better. Mm. And the go no go that you talked about, so mm. we put in place go no goes. Mm. We beefed up our business development team. Mm. So there are a lot of things we did which are structural mm -hmm. that can improve work life balance. Mm. A lot of it revolves around proposal writing, mm. but the big part was email mm. culture mm. when you go and leave we don't want to get emails from you yeah it's it's not good completely we're toxic. not going to feel like some warm yeah. fuzzy no. feeling of no. of appreciation no because you've sent an email while you leave we are yeah. going to feel appreciation <laughs> if you get an out of office that says that no emails will be read during that period yeah so that's that is a behavior that we yeah. put yeah. out there yeah and so work-life balance mm. we did something about that mm. 
Then the second thing was about speaking up. Mm. And speaking up has a lot of, uh, we had what we call a culture of silence. So now the culture shift is to mm. speak up a bit mm. more. Mm. And it had a, a loop, a direct loop with um, apathy, mm. with listening, mm. and people feeling like their opinions are not yeah. um, heard and yeah. appreciated. Mm. And therefore they start, keep, they keep on retreating Mm. until they are up there mm. outside the box and mm. so whatever happens they say they did this mm. it's not their problem mm. because they are <laughs> you know and uh, you could see that and so <clears throat> we try to work backwards about how did we get here mm. and so i go back to the i, I mentioned something earlier about positive feedback mm -hmm. we had internalized negative feedback mm. and we wore it as a badge of honor mm. that um you're great but you're mm. great, but mm. you're great, but mm. um, so I will focus on the 95% of the things that you did that were outstanding. Mm. They are all summarized as great. Mm. And then I'll spend two hours talking about the 5%, the but. And that was a model that we embraced and we liked and it served us well for some time. But then now it had created that whole mm, unhealthy dynamics about uh, the appraisal system, the reward mm. system, mm. people feeling like they're not listened to mm. because even though you have an issue, that issue is a bad thing. Mm. It's not the main thing. Mm. And so really like, like, I don't know, unlearning a lot of things about mm. feedback. Mm. Yeah. Uh, people who came for our interviews, they would tell you, my goodness, this is the worst interview I've ever attended because everybody like zeroes in on the negative. You come and do a job talk and immediately once you stop talking, everybody's going to, this was, there's a mistake here, there's a typo here, your slides are crowded and this, and so, and it's, people just pile on. So that culture, we, we, as I said, we, it was like a badge of honor for us. And that translated into the way we relate with each other, mm. not just for interviews, for seminars and mm. internal webinars, and we call them brown bags. Mm. And, um, appraisals so really it had knocked up it had knocked down many people mm. people had been knocked down mm. somebody does their best they go for an appraisal they spend two hours and mm. they spend 95 percent of the time talking about the one mistake they made and then they spend five percent of the time talking about the great things that they did and so people felt unappreciated mm. um and devalued undervalued mm. and so it had created a completely different dynamic mm and le which had led to apathy. So people had sort of stepped aside and mm. they were like, let them, mm. you know, run the institution. Mm. So really that like moment of clarity about the value of being nice mm. <laughs> in the way we give feedback mm. has been transformative. Mm. And when we talk about the culture shift, I think for me, that's the fundamental part mm. because mm. like stopping email culture, that is something mm. that um, mm. is very easy, mm. but really learning how to be nice mm. again mm. Mm. That has been that must <laughs> be nice again, and institutionalizing it. And institutionalizing, yeah, institutionalizing it. Yeah, yeah. So as part <clears throat> of culture, you said there were three things, and the third one. The third one was how to maintain excellence, mm. and so that was the question of what is excellence mm. to us. Mm. And um, yeah, people sitting down and defining what excellence means to them, mm. and then seeing how do we keep it. Mm. As I said, some things are behavioral, like mm -hmm. people changing the way they do things, but some are structural. Mm. So mm. like, um, mm. you know, the go, no go stuff, mm. all that um, mm. is about that. Mm. If you reduce the workload mm. and improve work-life balance, you're like mm. it to lead into excellence. Mm. So like mm. um, every person had to define what excellence means mm. to them. Mm. And then now we try to put things that support mm. people. Yes. But then a lot of it also depends on individual mm. behavior. Thank you.